Welcome to module 101 of Intro to Combat Sport Biomechanics. Today we're going to answer one simple question. What is biomechanics? Biomechanics is the study of the mechanical laws relating to the movement or structure of living organisms. In plain English, biomechanics is where physics meets biology. It's about looking at how the human body moves and then analyzing those movements using principles like force, leverage, momentum, energy transfer. It's essentially anatomy in motion, which is backed by math and physics. Now that might sound abstract, so let's ground it in something real. Think about a rear leg roundhouse kick. There's rotation from the hips, energy transfer through the torso, extension of the knee, and a whip-like motion that ends with the shin or the foot striking the target. Biomechanically, we can break that down into different joint angles, ground reaction forces, and energy transfer through the kinetic chain. That is biomechanics at work, turning something like a striking motion into something a little bit more understandable. So why does this even matter for the combat sports? because every punch or kick or takedown or guard pass is essentially a movement strategy. And biomechanics helps us understand the underpinnings of all of those movements. It helps us answer key questions like what's actually happening when someone generates power from the hips? Or what was the cause of that athlete's elbow injury when he planted on the ground and went for a sweep? We can identify the forces being generated or something like how small changes in different joint angles affect the movement. It's not just about what works, it's about why it works and how it works. But here's the nuance and I wanna be honest about this. There are three key limitations that I want to highlight. Biomechanics doesn't account for strategy or intent or creativity. You can't fully capture why a fighter chooses a certain movement or when they decide to use it. You can measure the torque in a spinning back fist, but not the split second decision that made it land. The second thing is that humans aren't robots. We're adaptable and we're highly inconsistent. Oftentimes what looks biomechanically ideal on paper might not be the most effective or realistic movement for every athlete. Fighters have different limb lengths, strength profiles, pain histories, and even stylistic preferences. Biomechanics can guide us, but it's certainly not a one-size-fits-all. Lastly, there's a difference between biomechanics in the lab and real-world fighting. Most traditional biomechanical analyses are done in a lab environment. Force plates, motion capture, slow and repeatable tasks. Combat sports? Not so much. You've got sweat, unpredictability, fatigue, and the constant need to adjust. It's really messy, but that's kind of what makes it beautiful. So how do you use biomechanics the right way in the combat sports? We use it more of a lens and not a rule book. For example, biomechanics can give us a way to do something like reduce injury risk or create training interventions that are grounded in how the body actually works. But we always balance that with context, the demands of the sport, the individuality of the athlete, and the chaos of a fighting environment. So to wrap up, here's what I want you to take away from this module. Biomechanics is the application of physics to human movement. It helps us understand the way that fighters move, but it has limits. It needs to be blended with coaching and context and experience. So in this course, my goal is to help us use biomechanics to build clarity and not confusion. We're gonna break down the body piece by piece, not just naming muscles and joints, understanding how they actually work together to generate movement, absorb force, and create performance. In the next module, we're gonna start from a very foundational level where it all begins. We're gonna talk about things like the anatomical position and some directional terms that'll be very important for the rest of the modules. This is the universal language that we use to describe the body accurately. Until then, I want you to think about this. The next time you see a knockdown or a really slick takedown, what's really happening underneath the surface? Let's figure that out together. I'll see you in module 102.